From this crazy Easter egg in Lego Marvel Super Heroes to... Wait, is that E.T.? These are some of the weirdest changes, Easter eggs, and references in the Lego video games. To kick things off, I want to show you something you might have missed in the Lego Pirates of the Caribbean game. If you play as Davy Jones and jump off of something a little high up, he'll flail around a little bit and roll when he hits the ground. But do you know what happens when you jump off of something really high? Well, Davy Jones actually loses all of his body parts, leaving only his head and the captain's hat. This is a pretty funny Easter egg that takes a bit of experimenting to find, but but it's got nothing on some of the other ones in this video, so be sure to watch until the end. Up next is a super cool reference in the LEGO Batman 2 Super Heroes game. In level 12, there's a giant clock in between the giant minifigure statues. If you make your way up there, you can actually change the time on the clock, but that isn't all. If you change the time to exactly 10.04, a bolt of lightning will shoot right out of the sky and completely destroy the clock. This is pretty cool all on its own, but it's actually a reference to Back to the Future, where the exact same thing happens happens in the movie. When I see stuff like this, it really makes me question how people even found out about it. Like seriously, this is an insane reference. If you thought this was surprising though, brace yourself because this next one is crazy. In level 7 of the LEGO Incredibles game, if you look at the sky at just the right time, you'll see something insane. The house from the movie up is literally just flying through the sky. I don't know if Russell had to take a detour or something, but last time I checked, this house does not belong anywhere near Metroville. I have to admit though, this is pretty funny. Like, seriously, what is that house doing there? Up next, I want to talk about a super secret reference in the Lego Marvel Super Heroes game. In level 7 of the game, Thor and the gang are traveling back to Asgard. They decide to travel through space, and on their way, bump into some pretty random objects. But one of those objects is actually a reference, and it's the police box. This is a clear reference to the show Doctor Who, because the TARDIS is also a phone box, and travels through space all the time. This one was a little more subtle, but if any Doctor Who fans are watching, I'm sure you guys caught it. This isn't the only time Doctor Who was referenced in a video game, though. In LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, there's a giant hole in the floor in the Hall of Doom. If you go down there and walk a little bit, you'll notice a weeping angel hiding under a tree. Now, obviously, a weeping angel has nothing to do with Batman, but the reference doesn't end there. If you go back up to the Hall of Doom, then back down the hole again, the weeping angel will be in a completely different position. In Doctor Who, weeping angels can only move when you aren't looking at them. So not only is this a really cool reference, reference, but it's also super accurate. Okay, at this point, we've seen a lot of Easter eggs that can only be found at certain times. So why don't we take a look at some character Easter eggs instead? In LEGO Harry Potter years one through four, sometimes you have to build jump pads to get to higher places. Usually when you do this, you jump on the jump pad and go super high. But when you do it with Hagrid, he actually breaks the jump pad. Hagrid is a half giant. And if you couldn't guess, that means he's really heavy. There aren't any jump pads in the Harry Potter movies though. So this Easter egg can only be found in the Lego Harry Potter video game. Pretty cool, right? Up next is actually a secret interaction that can only be had between two very specific characters in Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. If you play as Lando Calrissian, something pretty funny happens when you try and attack Princess Leia. Instead of attacking her, Lando actually starts getting Rizzy and kisses her hand. This isn't the only funny Easter egg in Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, though. While you're in the cantina, if you make your way over to the side, you'll find the cantina band playing their famous song. But did you know that you can actually stop them from playing. Now, I don't know why anybody would ever do that, but the way you do it is by going into your game settings and switching music from on to off. After this, the cantina band literally loses their instruments, and obviously without their instruments, they can't play their music. Up next is a super unexpected cameo in the LEGO Jurassic World game. In a cutscene from InGen Arrival, you can clearly see Elliot and E.T. flying by on their bicycle. The duo is even in front of a full moon, just like the scene from the movie. I don't know what it is with LEGO games, but there's always something going on in those cutscenes. When it comes to cutscenes, though, this next one takes the cake. In LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, at the end of A New Hope, Princess Leia starts awarding the new rebels with medals. In the original movie, though, for some reason, Chewbacca wasn't given a medal, even though he played a huge part in the princess's rescue. Well, LEGO took note of this and made the cutscene for this part of the movie super funny. Just about everybody got a medal besides Chewie, and as they were being handed out, he was really putting up a fight and trying to get his own. It's super funny, but I kind of feel bad at the same time. Get this man his medal. Up next is one of the craziest Easter eggs in the LEGO Marvel Super Heroes game. The game takes place in New York City, so obviously the Statue of Liberty is there. Well, if you go in front of the statue and look at it for long enough, it'll actually wink right at you. It does take a pretty long time though, so if you want to see this for yourself, I suggest you get some popcorn. Up next is actually a secret building technique in the LEGO movie game. If
If you've ever come across rainbow bricks, you might have been confused when you realized you couldn't build them or break them. But that's because those rainbow bricks aren't meant for everybody. They can actually only be moved by Unikitty. You can use this to your advantage to find Wonder Woman's invisible ship in the Cloud Cuckoo Land. There's a pile of rainbow bricks on the ground, which can be built into a catapult. After that, you can use them to launch yourself to the ship. Then you just have to break a few things and you'll get the achievement for finding and destroying Wonder Woman's invisible jet. If you thought that was cool though, just wait until you hear about this insane Easter egg in Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. If you go into battle mode as Master Yoda and fight Count Dooku, you'll find that Yoda is actually completely immune to Dooku's force lightning. In the Star Wars movies, Master Yoda not only absorbed, but also deflected lightning. So it was pretty cool to see that detail carried over into the Lego game. Up next is probably one of the weirdest references in all of Lego. In the Lego Dimensions game, if you walk through the Ghostbusters Adventure World portal, you'll find yourself in an entirely different world. As you make your way through this world, you'll come across the literal Titanic, but the ship itself isn't the reference I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the fact that on the nose of the ship, two skeletons are doing the exact same pose that Rose and Jack did in the Titanic movie. I swear, Lego just does whatever they want in these video games. Up next is a hilarious cutscene from Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. In Episode 5, the Empire Strikes Back, Luke and the gang find themselves in the city in the clouds. They're greeted by Han Solo's old friend, Lando Calrissian, who actually runs the city. Lando starts showing them around and eventually leads them to a room holding none other than Darth Vader. In the movie, Han Solo immediately takes out his blaster and starts shooting at Vader. But in the video game, he pulls out a banana and instead of a shootout, a food fight breaks out. Lego clearly did this to censor what happens in the movie, but I have to say they did a really good job. Along with cutscenes though, Lego also loves throwing in Easter eggs and references in the end credits, and that's exactly what they did in the Marvel Avengers game. Well, almost. After you beat Ultron, the scene where everyone tries to pick up Thor's hammer starts. None of them are able to do it except for Thor, because in the hammer's eyes, no one else was worthy. But then again, not everyone was in the room. After this scene, it cuts to the room after everyone left, and the goat himself, Stan Lee, is cleaning up the Avengers mess. While he's cleaning, he accidentally picks up Thor's hammer without even realizing and immediately puts it back down. Like I said before, only certain people are worthy of being able to pick up Thor's hammer. So I guess it only makes sense that Stan Lee can do it. Up next is one of the weirdest things ever done in a Lego video game, and it's in Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. At the beginning of Episode 4, A New Hope, R2-D2 and C-3PO crash land on Tatooine. They get picked up by some Jawas and are eventually sold to Luke Skywalker and Uncle Owen. In the movie, nothing is wrong with either of the droids, and the transaction actually goes pretty smoothly. But in the video game, R2 and 3PO seem to have somehow swapped heads. I don't even really know what the point of this one was, to be honest. I guess the game developers were just bored. Last, but certainly not least, is a change in the Lego Harry Potter game. In Harry's first game of Quidditch, he wins the game for his house by catching the Golden Snitch. In the movie, he ends up catching it with his mouth and spitting it out for the big reveal. But in the game, it somehow ends up getting stuck in his head. Harry then hits the side of his head a few times and the snitch falls right out. Now, this may have seemed pointless, but it actually wasn't. This game was released all the way back in 2010, so the developers just might not have been able to make the snitch fall out of Harry's mouth like it did in the movie. What was your favorite change, easter egg, or reference in this video? Be sure to let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe.